Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. Using Linux on a laptop has always been kind of a problem because of the lack of default gestures. Gestures on a trackpad. I found a few solutions over the years but none of them were really to my satisfaction. And now there's a project that's not exactly new but that's kind of taking the world of Linux laptops by storm and is even going to be integrated directly into elementary OS 6. It's been swiping away my doubts and it is going to handle all your gesture needs in a pinch. So let's zoom in on this. That, that was terrible. But you know what's not terrible? This video is sponsored. This video is sponsored by Kernel Care Plus. Linux servers mostly depend on OpenSSL for their security, and this makes it a choice target for hackers. Attacks on OpenSSL represent 19% of all hostile activity globally. To keep your server safe, you need to ensure that all libraries are correctly patched for all the recent vulnerabilities. But you can't just reboot these servers every time there's an update to OpenSSL or glibc. That's where Kernel Care Plus comes in. It detects all vulnerable shared libraries in memory and automatically applies live security updates to them without requiring service restarts or server reboots. Installing Kernel Care Plus is very easy and you can deploy it to multiple servers at a time on all major Linux distributions. It will then check for new updates every 4 hours. Once installed, the software can either talk to a Kernel Care Plus patch server or you can host your own on-premises. Learn more and try Kernel Care Plus for 30 days on all your servers by clicking the link in the description below. Ok, let's start by talking about gestures on Linux. They do exist, although not many distributions ship them out of the box. But they're mostly reserved to Wayland, and most Linux distros don't use Wayland, they use x.org, x11, which is the main display server on many Linux distributions. And on x.org, gestures are hard to do. I've been using libinput gestures, which is basically a library that maps your gestures on a trackpad to a keyboard command, which means that when you do the action on your trackpad, as soon as the action is registered, it triggers a keyboard shortcut that does any action that you assign to that shortcut. The problem is, the gestures don't feel smooth. You're not into macOS gestures territory, because the elements on the screen don't move as you move your fingers. They move after the keyboard shortcut has been triggered. And that's a bit of a problem, because you don't get the same feeling of reactivity, you don't get the same sensation that the elements react to your gesture. You feel like you do the thing, and then everything reacts. It's basically just like hitting a few keys. And it's not smooth, and it's not as big a connection with the software as you would expect on a laptop. Now when elements move in synchronization with your fingers, like for example when you pan from the right to the left to switch virtual desktops, and the desktop just moves slowly with your hands, this is what we call one-to-one -one gestures. And fortunately, there is now a project that aims to do just that. That's where TouchEgg comes in. TouchEgg is not a very recent project. It actually started in 2015 and it was created by Jose Esposito and 11 other contributors. This project aims to give you good gestures on your trackpad, but how is it different than libinput gestures? Well, it's just because TouchEgg gives you a visual feedback when you start doing your gestures on your trackpad. It gives you an image of what's going to happen. For example, if you use gestures to tile your windows, let's say a four-finger swipe from the right to the left to tile your window to the left edge of the screen, well, you're going to see the outline of the window as you drag your fingers. There's going to be a blue outline of your window that grows in size from the left to the right as you swipe your fingers which means that you see what's actually happening. It helps give you a sense of connection, a sense of what is happening as you drag your fingers on the touchpad. This might seem very minor, but it has plenty of advantages. First, you can see that your gesture is correctly registering, whether with libinput gesture, when you do the gesture, you have to wait for the keyboard shortcut to be triggered and then to see if the action has worked. And sometimes it doesn't, so you're going to be doing the same gesture three times and you're going to be doing it twice because it has registered the two last times. With touch egg, you don't have the issue and you can even cancel the gesture, start moving your fingers and if you see the outline and that's not something that you wanted to do, you can just slowly move them back to the other side and see that the outline of the window will just slowly fade away and your gesture is cancelled. Now touch egg supports a lot of actions. You can maximize a window or restore it to its initial size. You can minimize it. But you can also tile them to the edges of the screen or close them or change virtual desktops, or even trigger any keyboard shortcut that you'd like. Now, all of these actions can be performed using three or four fingers swiping, pinching, zooming, 
or tapping. It comes with a default configuration file that you can tweak if you want, but the gestures integrated by default are pretty good. And of course, you can also map any keyboard shortcut to any gesture. Now, TouchTech is available in the AUR, but there's also a Deb package for Debian or Debian-based distros and an RPM package for everything based on Red Hat, so Fedora, CentOS, Red Hat, and Bryce Linux, etc., etc. You can obviously also compile it from source if you'd prefer. Now, TouchTech will be integrated into Elementary OS 6 by default with a very interesting tweak, which I'm going to talk about just after I talk about TouchTech's issues, because TouchTech has two main problems. The first one is that it has no graphical user interface to configure the gestures. This means that everything has to be configured in its config file. It's not that hard and you can base yourself on the examples that they gave or on the GitHub page which explains how to create a new gesture, how to map it to the action that you want, but it's still not very user friendly. There's nothing for you to enable these gestures with an easy point and click way. And that's a problem and I hope this can be solved soon. Now the second issue with Touch Egg is that it doesn't really make elements move on the screen. It only gives you an outline of what's going to happen. So for maximizing a window or tiling a window, it's not really an issue because the visual cue that TouchTech uses resembles what you would get when you drag a window with your mouse to the edge of the screen. You see the outline of the window increasing slowly as you, as you press against the edge of the screen. That's exactly the same effect that you'd get when you use TouchTech or when you use your mouse to drag a window. The problem is more when you try to change virtual desktops. Instead of having the desktop move as you move, you're going to get a little arrow that gets bigger and bigger, telling you that you're going to move to that desktop if you complete the gesture. And it's not as well integrated as having the desktop move with your fingers. But fortunately, the Elementor OS team has a solution for that. Let's see how they did it. So Elementor OS 6 has had a gestures item in their backlog for their project for a long time. They wanted one-to-one -one gestures, not something based on libinput gestures. And until Jose Esposito came with Touch Egg, it didn't seem like it was possible on X.org. Nobody had a real good solution. Fortunately, they partnered up with Jose, and now they are working to integrate these one-to-one -one gestures directly into the window manager of Elementary OS 6, which is called Gala. Now, this means that the desktop can use Touch Egg as an input source and the window manager can respond to the gesture as it happens. This means that you're going from this to this. See how that's better? So for now, only the multitasking animation and the switching desktop animations have been implemented using Touch Egg. This means that every other action will still use Touch Egg's default visual cues, but as we saw before, tiling a window or maximizing it, the visual cues from Touch Egg just look like exactly the same as what you would get when just dragging a window to the top of the screen, to the left or to the right. It's, it's not a problem. Now what that really means is that any desktop environment could implement Touch Egg at the system level and make it work with the window manager to provide the same kind of animations and a default configuration. So Gnome, Plasma, Cinnamon, Mate, Budgie, whatever, any single one of them could decide to integrate Touch Egg with their own window manager and make it work in the same way as in Elementary OS 6. Now, the second issue that we saw was that there was no graphical user interface. And the Elementary team is once again on point here because they are bringing a very simple graphical interface. You're not going to be configuring super specific gestures per application, but you're still going to be able to configure some swiping, to swipe desktops, to, to maximize the windows, to view the multitasking view. It's going to be way easier to configure. You're not going to have to tweak your config file by hand. So obviously, this is a very good project that you can install on any single distribution. But for now, it's going to be way better on Elementary OS 6 because you get real one-to-one -one gestures with elements moving on the screen as you move your fingers on the touchpad. But don't worry, any other distribution or any other desktop environment could work to implement it in the same way if they wanted to integrate Touch Egg with their window manager. Now, that's not the only work Elementary OS is doing in terms of gestures. This has not much to do with Touch Egg anymore, but more with LibHandy, which is a small library that Purism has developed to bring GNOME to the Librem 5 and to mobile operating systems. So basically, it's a small library that lets you transform a desktop app into a more responsive app with panels that slide all over each other. And this library also enables gestures, which means that the Elementor OS team has taken advantage of it and has brought this into a multiple variety of environments. 
you can now swipe with two fingers to display the screenshots in the app center. You can swipe with two fingers to go back or forward into Epiphany. You can also use that to go back up one level in the settings when there's multiple panels or to swipe through the welcome tour. They're starting to implement it in many different applications and as time goes by, probably most if not all of them will support this. They are also letting you use two fingers swiping to dismiss notifications on your desktop or even clear them from the notification view, which looks amazing. We're into macOS-like territory in terms of smoothness here. Now, if all you wanted to know about was Touch Egg and how it works and how you can install it on your distro of choice, then you can tune out. But I still think it's pretty important to talk about why gestures are very useful. Because some of you might think, Beth, gestures, they're not useful. I've got keyboard shortcuts. Why would I use gestures? And what you need to understand is that for most users, gestures is a way to get a better connection with their device. A laptop is inherently more personal than a desktop because you interact directly with the machine itself. On a desktop, you interact with a keyboard plugged in either wirelessly or through a cable into your tower that sits generally down at the bottom of your desk or on top of your desk. You're not touching the device directly. On a laptop, you can use your touch screen, you can use the touchpad, you use the keyboard that are directly mounted onto the device. So basically you touch the device to interact with it. And this creates a physical connection between you and the device. It's not something that's used through a proxy. And to improve that connection and to make that laptop feel more personal, to make that laptop feel more responsive, gestures are a super important part of the experience. I believe that's why macOS has been so successful on laptops because their gesture game has been on point since the beginning. And I think we're reaching that territory with Elementor iOS 6 here. And I hope many other distributions will take the time to implement Touch Egg at the window manager level and get smooth animations either on x.org or through the Wayland APIs if they prefer to switch to Wayland. In that case, you won't need Touch Egg. And that's it for this video. Don't hesitate to try a Touch Egg. Tell me what you think about it. If you liked the video, don't hesitate to like it or dislike it if you didn't. You can also subscribe or turn on notifications if you really want to see more videos like this one. And if you want to help support the channel, you can also join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members and get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next videos I'll cover. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!